And this is why you should leave animation to the humans and not some dumbass cat thing. Steven, play that opening. Talking about animation studios is always an arduous task, mainly because everyone on the internet thinks their opinion is a fact. So, let me, uh... Let me explain why my opinion is indeed a fact. So little is actually known about animation that I honestly believe a huge majority of anime fans don't even understand how the process of animation works, just like how they don't understand the process of general hygiene. Not only that, but also the fact that people think a studio's name alone can carry a series, or rather, that the studio's confirmation guarantees quality. It's honestly all a bit baffling to me as someone who not only loves anime, but, well, also hates anime. And we are going to talk about the studio that has absolutely been killing it, despite what you see on Twitter. Studio Mappa. What is up everyone and welcome to a wonderful little show I like to call Writer's Blocked, the show where we defend the CGI Beast Titan and all of his incredible glory. Today we are going to talk about one of my favorite studios and probably the current most talked about studio in general, Studio Mappa. Studio Mappa was founded in 2011 by former Madhouse producer blah blah blah, it's not like any of you actually care about the boring shit. Wait, you, you guys, uh, you guys care about the, the boring? Oh, okay, well, Mappa was founded by former Madhouse producer Masao Maruyama, I, I think. I'm really not gonna do the joke where it's hard to pronounce because it's Japanese, but it is kind of hard to pronounce, so... Yeah, yeah. Anyway, since then, they have been putting out a steady stream of good to absolutely banging anime. Kids on the Slope, Inuyashiki, Doro Hidoro, The God of High School, and more recently, Jujutsu Kaisen and Attack on Titans Final Season. That was tough to get out. Oh, and did I forget to mention two of the anime that made my channel what it is? Yuri on Ice and Banana Fish? Uh, Steven made sure to put them in the tads because we, um, we, we need to make money sometimes, so. Needless to say, MAPPA is clearly capable of both good adaptations as well as original anime. But you see, there's a major thing that people don't take into account when discussing things like animation studios. There's so much more to a studio than their name's recognition. Studio Trigger, known for the lights of Kill la Kill, Kizniver, and Darling in the France, is often praised for their unique style of art, and while that is true, each of their series varies in quality significantly. And the reason why is because although each anime is made by the same studio, each anime also has a completely different team for the most part. Directors, storyboarders, and everything in between is the deciding factor on how shitty an adaptation will or will not be. For instance, Shinichiro Watanabe is a famous anime director and the brilliant mind behind shows such as Cowboy Bebop, Samurai Champloo, and Space Dandy. All three have Watanabe's unique story feel and characters, but here's the crazy thing. All three were made by completely different studios, those studios being Sunrise, Manglobe, and Bones respectively. So with that example, you can clearly see that what really matters is who is directing the series, not so much which studio animates the series. However, each studio will have certain in-house talents as well as differing willingness to take on projects and do them justice. A studio like Studio Perio will take on a crazy amount of adaptations, so the quality tends to suffer just a bit. They are great at work output, but not so great at maintaining a constant quality. No director can completely save this due to the way they put out episodes. This is things like Black Clover or Boruto, just really long series that don't really take breaks. So yeah, instead of taking seasonal breaks, they just continually put out episode after episode. Now a studio like MAPPA is maybe a bit more selective on what adaptations they will take on that on top of handling seasonal animes rather than constantly ongoing ones, which will allow them to really flex those muscles when it comes to their quality. It's why a show like Jujutsu Kaisen looks consistently better than a juggernaut like Boruto. This care for quality comes down more to just the art being consistent, but also the fact that MAPPA adaptations are very well handled, with very little changes to the original work. And I believe if given the opportunity, MAPPA would make all of Boruto's little finger paintings and paper mache volcanoes really jump out of the screen. You know, because for some reason Boruto's too busy hanging out and dancing when at the same time Naruto was that age and almost dying and having to cut poison out of his hands and fighting like a world famous assassin and killing them. <sighs> they just don't make these little blonde twinks like they used to. That's a terrible line. St Steven, maybe don't. 
Put these two qualities together and you can start to see why MAPPA is a bit more trustworthy than other studios when handling adaptations. The Joker, I can hear you say with your shit and piss filled diapers. Why do they use so much CGI and Attack on Titan if they're so good? Studio Wit never did that. And I'll answer that brain dead sentence you call a question after this quick commercial break. Back to the topic at hand. Not only has Studio Wit used shoddy CGI in the past, but the major problem with this final season of Attack on Titan is that nobody wanted to animate it. See, it wasn't like Wit gifted Mappa with this incredible honor of carrying the crown. No, Wit couldn't animate the last season and so they offered it up. But due to heavy time constraints and other issues, no studio wanted to take the burden that is the largely popular and extremely close to finishing Attack on Titan anime. Honored to animate it or not, this is a huge undertaking. Mappa took it and made this amazing season with CGI that isn't even that bad. That on top of working on other things like the previously mentioned incredibly well done Jujutsu Kaisen anime adaptation, plus the upcoming Chainsaw Man, are you kidding me? We are lucky to have a studio as competent as Mappa willing to deliver us this season, and yet people want to bash them for what they consider low quality. The studio that broke from Madhouse, one of the biggest and most revered studios in all of the field, is proving time and time again that you can have a constant stream of work and give it all the quality it needs to be something special. A studio isn't the end-all be-all of an anime. There are hundreds of other factors, but a studio decides how much effort goes into these things. And when it comes to the anime that are being produced by Studio Mappa, I truly believe they are raising the bar. Besides, no other studio could have made the slaughter of children look so satisfying. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. This video is a little different. I also have to apologize because the mic quality might be a little bit different. I am not at home, so I have to use a different mic. Um, so thank you guys so much. If you watched all the way to the end, I love you all. And until next week, goodbye.